Okay, class, welcome to chapter two. And uh, like I said at the beginning of the year, we're now switching into the physics mode, and chapter two deals with motion. Section one is describing motion, two, acceleration, and section three, motion and forces. So where we get into a lot of Newton's laws of motion, and it even helps explain the Newton's cradle that I have on my desk. Section one, like I said, starts with motion. And it asks the question, are distance and time important in describing running events at the track and field meets in the Olympics? And I would say, yes, it is. Distance and time are important. In order to win a race, you must cover the distance in the shortest amount of time. How would you describe the motion of the runners in a race? You don't always need to see something move to know that motion has taken place. A reference point is needed to determine the position of an object. And you can use the analogy that if you want to see something move, you have to have a reference point. Did it move past that point that you used as a reference point? Motion occurs when an object changes its position relative to a reference point. Motion of an object depends on the reference point that is chosen. If you're sitting in a chair reading this, you're moving. You're not moving relative to your desk or school building, but you're moving relative to the other planets in the solar system and the sun. An important part of describing the motion of an object is to describe how far it has moved, which is distance. The SI unit of length or distance is the meter. There's a, one of those potential test questions. The SI unit of length or distance is the meter. Longer distances are measured in kilometers. And again, it's all relative to what scale you're using. If you're measuring the distance from here to Appleton, you probably want to use kilometers instead of meters. Shorter distances are measured in centimeters. Okay, and here's some of the conversions. And again, this graphic here, I don't expect you to memorize it. It's in the back of your planners. Um, and I'll often, if we have it referenced on a test, I'll give you those conversions from the metric to the English system and back and forth. Displacement. <clears throat> We're going to look at displacement. And displacement and distance traveled are different. And uh, you'll be responsible for knowing the difference. Suppose a runner jogs to the 50 meter mark and then turns around and runs back. And that's illustrated here. He jogs to the 50 meter mark and then turns around and comes back to the 20 meter mark. The runner travels 50 meters in the original in the original direction north, and that's indicated how you know he's going north because it's indicated there's north. Okay, plus 30 meters in the opposite direction south. Okay, he went from here to here. So the total distance she ran is 80 meters. Went 50 meters north, and then 30 meters to the south. Sometimes you may want to not know not only your distance, but also your direction from a reference point, such as from the starting point. Displacement is the distance and direction of an object's change in position from the starting point. So in this case, we would say that the displacement of the runner is 20 meters north of the starting line. The distance traveled is the 50 meters plus the 30 meters. So distance and displacement aren't necessarily the same thing. And as indicated here, the total distance traveled is 50 meters plus 30 to here. But its displacement from the starting line here 
is only 20 meters, all right? He's only 20 meters this distance from the original starting line. So distance and displacement aren't the same variable. The length of the runner's displacement and the distance traveled will be the same if the runner's motion was in a single direction. For example, if the runner were to have stopped here at the finish line, it would say that his distance traveled is 50 meters and his displacement is 50 meters from the original starting point. You can describe movement by the distance traveled and by the displacement from the starting point. And at this point, we're getting into speed. You might want to describe how fast it's moving. Speed is the distance an object travels per unit of time. And we'll break down that formula in a second. Any change over time is called a rate. If you go outside in the side of your house and look at the uh, electric meter, that is a rate. Your parents pay so much, uh, they pay a rate, their amount of electricity usage over time. If you think of distance as a change in position, then speed is the rate at which distance is traveled or the rate of change in position. And here's that formula graphically. Again, in SI units, meters per second, Speed is distance divided by time in meters per second. Okay, so if a standard question asks you, what is the speed of the race car? You're going to give it in meters per second, unless we specify other units. The SI unit for distance is the meter. SI unit of time is a second. So in SI, units of speed are measured in meters per second, as I just said. And these are just some examples of units of speed. Kilometers per second, a rocket escaping atmosphere. Kilometers per hour, a car. And centimeters per year, geologic plate movements. And typically that ranges from 2 to 17 centimeters a year. Those tectonic plates shift. Sometimes it's more convenient to express speed in other units, such as kilometers per hour and centimeters per year. Now we're going to take a look at motion with constant speed. Suppose you're in a car traveling on a nearly empty freeway. You look at the speedometer and see that the car's speed hardly changes. If you're traveling at a constant speed, you can measure your speed over any distance interval. Usually speed isn't constant. Think about riding a bicycle for a distance of five kilometers as shown in this graphic. Okay, This distance that they didn't put down it would be that five kilometers. How would you express your speed on such a trip? Would you use your fastest speed, your slowest speed, or some speed between the two? And what you'd probably use is an average speed. This five kilometer distance, you would come up with an average speed. Average speed describes speed of motion when speed is changing. Average speed is the total distance traveled divided by the total time of travel. If the total distance traveled was a five kilometers and the total time was a quarter of an hour or 0.25 hours, the average speed was distance divided by time. Five kilometers divided by 0.25 hours equals 20 kilometers per hour. Instantaneous speed. A speedometer shows how fast a car is going at one point in time or at one instant. The speed shown on a speedometer is the instantaneous speed. Instantaneous speed is the speed at a given point in time. The speedometer reminds me when I got uh, a snowmobile a few years ago and I was out on a turtle flowage with my buddy Super Dave and we sped off across there and when we got to the other end of course he was waiting for me at a faster sled he said how fast were you going and I said oh I said I had the thermometer buried at about a hundred miles an hour and he said he said you weren't going fast enough and I said why wasn't I going fast enough he said because you could still see your, th your speedometer 
Okay, instantaneous speed again. You look down at your thermometer and when you get your licenses and you look at the speedometer, that's instantaneous speed, the speed at that point in time. When something is speeding up or slowing down, its instantaneous speed is changing. If an object is moving with constant speed, the instantaneous speed doesn't change. The motion of an object over a period of time can be shown on a distance time graph. We'll see if this movie will work. And it doesn't look like our graphics going to work here. Time is plotted along the horizontal axis of the graph, and the distance travel is plotted along the vertical axis of the graph. And I can include this, this uh, video at the end of the lecture. On a distance time graph, the distance is plotted on the vertical axis. And again, I can draw that for you. Distance on the vertical axis. And here you would put D. Oh, come on. D for distance. And then time is on the horizontal axis. Okay, distance over time. Each axis must have a scale that covers the range of numbers to be plotted. Once the scales for each axis are in place, the data points can be plotted. After plotting, draw a line connecting the points. The next point we're going to look at is velocity. Speed describes only how fast something is moving. To determine direction, you need to know the velocity. Velocity includes speed of an object and the direction of its motion. And uh, you'll often hear like old TV shows, uh, news, they'll say his velocity was uh, 100 miles per hour. It's not a true representation of velocity unless they say his velocity was 100 miles per hour traveling south or towards Appleton or you know north to Alaska. You have to have a direction in order to report a velocity. Because velocity depends on direction as well as speed, the velocity of an object can change even if the speed of the object remains constant. Speed of this car might be constant, but its velocity isn't constant because the direction of motion is always changing. And we can show you that here, that this car his direction, it's always changing. His direction, going around in that circle, his direction is always changing. So you can say that a NASCAR, the Daytona 500 coming up, their velocity isn't constant because their direction of motion is always changing. As you look around the surface of the Earth from year to year, the basic structure of the planet seems to be the same. Yet if you examine geological evidence, looked over the past 250 million years, you'd see that the large changes have occurred. In this movie, this is what you'll get into in Earth science. This is plate tectonics. And we can look at 250 million years ago when the, the uh, continents were together. And over the course of geologic time, They've moved apart to what we have the present day. And they are now coming back together. And in another 250 million years ago, we'll have something similar to this, but not quite the same. What this looks like 250 million years ago, they were together. 66 million years ago, they started to separate. And... This is what they look like the present day. And this explains a lot of the earthquakes and volcanic activity that we get. And again, when you get into the earth science class, you'll see this. And some of you already had earth science, and this is familiar to you. How can continents move around the surface of the earth? We're looking at lithosphere, which is the upper the crust and the upper mantle that rides on top of the asthenosphere. And because of the inner, inner and outer core, 
um, sets up convection currents, the heating and cooling, and causes those plates to move. Lithosphere is broken in a huge section called plates. We identify about 15 to 16 lithospheric or tectonic plates that are in constant motion, bumping into each other or separating, and this is what causes the volcanic and earthquake activity we experience around the world. Okay, question one. I'm not going to give you the answers. You'll be responsible for the answers for question one. And I want you to respond via my big campus by answering quest these questions that are attached at the end. Just to give me um, uh, a check to make sure that you're listening to the lecture notes. So question one asks, what is the difference between distance and displacement? And I will post these questions to the My Big Campus page, and I want you to post a response. Question one is the difference between distance and displacement. Question two, blank is the distance an object travels per unit of time. Is that acceleration, displacement, speed, or velocity? And again, I'll post quite these questions at the end of the lecture uh, online on My Big Campus. Question three. Question three asks, what is instantaneous speed? All right, you can post your response. And that concludes the lecture for the lecture notes for section one, section two to follow.